Hello there, David Taylor or Mr. Pelagonium back with another video for the Pelagonium and Geranium Society. Uh, today we're going to have a look at my hybridized regals. You remember I showed a video about a couple of months ago on the progress of the, uh, the regals that I bred last year. Um, the seed were produced, I sowed them and they've grown on and they are now growing like crazy and flowering, beginning to flower. I would say about half of them have flowered. So let's have a look. Well, hello everybody, and it's good to see you again uh, on a very, very wet day here in uh, Southern England. Um, it's absolutely pouring down with rain. It has been doing that all morning. I'm filming this on the 11th of May. Um, and it's quite unusual because for the last couple of months in England, it's been virtually bone dry. Uh, so a good solid rain for the morning is exactly what we want. I need to fill up my water butts so that I've got plenty of water to uh, water my plants. But today I'm actually looking at my regals. Now anybody that uh, either looks at my Facebook page, uh, I use my normal name, David C. Taylor. I put a C in the middle of um, David, David Taylor because there are so many David Taylors. So it's David C. Taylor on Facebook if you want to see uh, images of these plants. Or my Instagram, Mr. Pelagonium, is where you can see lots of pictures and little um, little stills or even little videos um, of the plants that I've hybridised here. So I'll take the camera off and we'll immediately start having a look at some of them. Right, well I'm going to sort of start up this end first. Right, well this one up here was the very first one to flower, so it's, I've just called it 01, so it'll be 2021. I always do the year of the seedling for the labelling, um, so it's a 21 seed and it's the very first one to flower. Generally done them in the order that they flowered, so this was the very first one. Now, this is very similar to the pollen parent, Rachel, and I can actually show you that over here because it's in flower quite well. Um, that's Rachel, uh, and you can see the difference. Um, this one's a bit marginally lighter and has got a little bit of the mottling. The only minor problem is there's a little bit of inconsistency going on here. Is this that you can see? This one hasn't got any of the the white sort of mottling going on whereas that one for instance that bloom is very much um got the the good coverage of the mottling there which is really what i was after now if we look at a, a, another plant entirely this was one of the ones that's just recently flowered and this one has got very very uniform mottling 2106 so but the mottling on this one is very very uniform and i really like this if it stays nice and uniform which it seems to be on all the different blooms uh that could actually look really nice now i do have to add that the coloring of these may be affected marginally by you know just the actual video coloring i do try to make one or two adjustments when i'm uh, post-processing the videos and I would say that that is darker than is coming through on the screen. Now another really nice one I think is this one here. Now this bloom has been out for quite a while and it's just beginning to go over you can see that but this really does colour nicely and it's got a really good colouring on the uh, upper petals, a good solid blotch that doesn't fracture, and we'll talk about fracturing in a moment. That looks very clean, it's very tidy, you get good, got that dark sort of feathering on the, on the lower petals, very, very nice dark blotch though on the upper petals. Very, very big bloom, it should be said, uh, but it's really, really nice. Uh, and this is actually, there seems to be a consistency in the different colour variations. There are those based on the sort of shades of salmon, those that obviously follow the um, the pollen parent, and then the others, we haven't looked at that one yet, but there are others that follow shriven and pearl, which is the seed parent. 
Uh, but there are one or two others coming as well, which are actually on a pink shade. But unfortunately, they are all coming a bit later. So we can't see any of those today. Now, we we'll talk a little bit now about fracturing. This is on the pink side. This is um, quite a nice one. I actually haven't numbered this yet. And it's debatable, mainly because it's very debatable as to whether I will keep that. Because if you look at the upper petals here, this is what we call fracturing of the colour. Um, and it, it is a shame because that could have been really quite a nice bloom. It's very large, it's very frilly, you know, got a white base with a good pink overlay to it. Um, and the, the sort of dark... Not as dark as that one, but a, a fairly dark crimson blotch on the upper petals. But it's completely fracturing and it's consistent fracturing as well on all of the uh, petals. That one's got it perhaps to a slightly lesser extent. But this is a problem that you can get with regals. And if that was to be consistently fracturing, I will almost certainly probably get rid of that one. But it's a shame because it's quite a nice plant. Now this one over the back here, this was actually 03. Um, but this is really the star of the show so far. I absolutely love this. Large, really, really frilly blooms. Got stunning light, sort of um, magenta lilac veining on the lower petals. Got the deep sort of plum blotch on the upper petals. Um, very, very frilly very frilly bloom, a large bloom. Uh, well, there's my finger, and you can just get an idea of how big that is. It's absolutely huge heads. Uh, so obviously it's a seedling, so they do grow very strong, very vigorous as a seedling. Um, as cuttings, they will probably lose a little bit of that vigor and that growth over the, over the years to come. But um, if that colour which is very very consistent all through every head um, I think that is certainly the star of the show so far so I'm going to do a swap round now to bring in some of the others that are flowering okay so with this batch we've got some we've got some different colourings now I actually this is very consistent um, very again a very large bloom lots of pollen on it, in it so it'd be very useful for breeding with um, now this is sort of you know, shades of lilac, magenta, whatever you want to call it. This is a very consistent bloom and almost certainly pretty decent, a lot of following bloom as well. So almost pretty decent for a show this one. Um, so I will certainly retain that. Yeah, that was, the, that was the second one. So you can see an image of that on my pages, on my social media pages. Now the next one we'll see is just one that started flowering now. So again, it's quite tight and frilly, but I think with this we're going to have the fracturing problem again. Just already beginning to fracture. If we have a look at that one, it's got fracturing all above the blotch and it's barely out yet. So I think this one, unfortunately, lovely shades of salmon it should be said, but um, I'm not sure that that will be able to... Uh, make the grade unfortunately now another one that's of similar coloring strangely although a bit paler this one looks if it's going to be a bit stronger it's only just started flowering so i have pulled it through this one hasn't got a number yet but when it really does begin to flower i think this will be given a number a white base uh with lovely salmon sort of feather blotch on the lower petals and a dark deep crimson on the upper petals quite like that one it, it's a quite a vibrant bloom even though there is only a couple of blooms that have just come out now another one that i'm going to show now is another one of the stars of the show uh, again i don't think the camera is going to do this justice but this is actually darker than um i can portray what I'm looking at on my screen anyway is a lot lighter than I can actually physically see. Um, this is quite a deep purplish colour. Quite different to the Marie Rudlin, which as I've shown you already, is on the crimson side. This is on the purple side. Uh, this is definitely, and it's got the uniform mottling all over the, uh, the 
uh, all over the bloom, which is sort of what I was aiming for anyway. Uh, but it's quite deep purple. Um, and that's that's quite a nice bloom. That's number five, I think. Uh, oh, it's number four, actually. It's number four, that one. If you want to have a look at images of that on Mr. Pelagonium um, Instagram page. Now, I'm just going to reverse because another one I've got is this one here. Now, one of the problems with this plant is that it's actually absolutely identical in bloom colour to the uh, seed parent of Shriven and Pearl. Um, virtually identical. Uh, you get this little hint of the colour on the lower petals. So this, I don't know that I'll number this, but I will wait certainly until Shriven and Pearl, which is there, um, that one there, and I've got another one down there somewhere until they flower, but they've been stopped for show, so I'm not going to be seeing any bloom on them um, for another few weeks yet. But I'll certainly do a compare, and we'll see how they uh, how they go together. Right, next we'll come to uh, this seedling over here. This has just started flowering. It's quite a uniform bloom. This is Parisian crossed with Shriven and Pearl. Um, and I've actually got a relatively simple lilac coloured uh, bloom here, nothing too special. Um, so again, it'll be one where the jury's out on it really, but it's quite attractive. Right, so there we are, that's just about it realistically. Um, something that, I mean, I've got some others there, there's one there that's just about to come out, looks like that's going to be shades of pink. Uh, there are some slightly quirky ones, as we've seen previously. This one here looks more like a scented leaf type plant. Very, very deeply cut um, leaves. Really quite quirky. Just beginning to bud up. That's a good couple of weeks away from coming out, I would say. A really odd plant, though, that one. It really hasn't got leaf characteristics from either um, Shriven and Pearl or the Rachel so I've got no idea what that's thrown back to, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Now, you may remember we had a tiny little thing. Um, got white chiffon and my standard of Bolero are growing quite well, incidentally. Uh, you remember in the, in the sort of preview video I did a couple of months back, um, we had a little tiny thing that was really showing that it is quite different to uh, the others, and it's still growing. It is tiny though still. So it's gonna be very interesting to see exactly what happens with this one. Um, now, there is just a small bud break at the top. It is very slow growing. Whether this will be sort of any use to sort of grow on really as a any kind of sales plant, I very much doubt, but um, it's going to be interesting to see what the bloom is like because it really is tiny. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed that little look around my uh, hybridised regals so far. As I've said, there will need to be a second part when the others come through. Um, and I'll do another video of that. Probably be about two or three weeks time, maybe towards the end of the month. Um, but in the meantime, there's obviously a lot going on. I'm actually going away towards the end of next week for uh, several days, so maybe a little bit of a gap now, we'll have to see, but uh, I'll see you again, hopefully, certainly before the end of the month, as we even get towards the showtime. So uh, lots going on, the greenhouse is getting cramped, everything beginning to just throw a bit of bloom. Thankfully, not my show plants, though. So uh, we'll have a look at those towards the end of the month to see how they're developing. So I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye for now.